today we're going to do a test that I've been wanting to do for years. We're going to be testing bolts that have been in the wall for about 30 years to see if they're still viable. They've been sitting here oxidizing and rusting. To do a drop test, we need things to drop. Here are our organic free range uh, dummies harvested from the forest floor over there. These are oak. There is a cable looped through both of these. My goal was 500 pounds. I have no idea how much these weigh, but if they generate enough force to break stuff, it's good enough. This is a little carabiner from Black Diamond rated to 20 kilonewtons. I am not using dynamometers on this test because I don't like breaking dynamometers. If this carabiner breaks, it means the bolt is at least 20 kilonewtons strong. And we'll do some collaborating tests um, at the lab up in Seattle. 30-ish year old wedge bolt. The electrical tape is to keep orientation so things don't get cross-loaded and we don't like explode from a gate. We have the snap shackle through the wire rope right here. That is backed up with our quick draw in case for some reason the snap shackle opened up while we we're hauling. This little blue cord is our snap shackle and... Yes! This is now loose, spinning. I have never seen a climbing hanger get deformed like that from a fall. Awesome, that did exactly what I expected it to do. So uh, if we constructed this test properly, that means we saw uh, at least 20 kilonewtons uh, at the bolt carabiner and the carabiner failed first. So that bolt, in my opinion, is still super strong enough to climb on. Three, two, one. <laughs> Some of you might be saying, what's that purple thing? Climbers don't use that. And that's absolutely correct. This is a industrial round sling, uh, which is very static. A climbing rope is dynamic and it absorbs a lot of force, which is a good thing because it doesn't transfer all that force to your body or to the gear. In tests that we have done, it is really hard to generate more than four kilonewtons in a climbing fall. And we wanted to generate 20. Five piece Metolius hanger. We ended up breaking the hanger. It is hard to get good help. This is a black diamond neutrino and not the same as the other carabiners we we're using. Uh, so it is rated a little bit stronger at 24 kilonewtons. And you can see that hanger really chewed on it before it failed. Here we have a 5 16 button head, the Tolius hanger. Uh, we've got the correct carabiner again, and our really strong carabiner. Uh, we've got some uh, faux am steel here uh, to a chain puller, and we'll see if we can generate enough force to break this. Things are deforming. Yeah, I don't want to do that again. It loosened it up, deformed the hanger a bit at the bottom, but uh, the carabiner failed. Button head number two, little deforming of the hanger, definitely now loose. The bolt is slightly pulled away from the wall, but the hanger survived and the carabiner lost. So Bobby's load cell is rated for 20 kilonewtons, but let's find out how strong it actually is on the drop tower. Let's find out how strong these carabiners are. And we put it on an old hanger on this chain shackle to our soft shackle, to our line scale, to our all natural drop tower. Now I have a span set here, but I put a knot in here to kind of shock absorb enough to slow it down before it breaks. So our 1280 Hertz is gonna be super fast enough. And these are all of my anti cross loading mechanisms here. This is 160 pounds or about 72 kilograms. Please break it. Oh, that's not what I was trying to break. I have no idea what happened. That is not the same shape 
but it is not broken. Are you kidding me? Hey, hey, I didn't break a line scale. Wow, we're in the ballpark. I just can't have the wrong things breaking. Okay, let's try this again. We've got 1280 hertz. We've got a stronger hanger on here now. We're gonna take this to destruction. The gate is closed. We should get, well, a compromised full strength out of it. I had my eyes closed. I have no idea what happened, but wow. That's pretty good. Fun fact, the hangers deform around 8K in, and that's what happens when the shock load is fast, around 27. So I have stakes holding up my wall, except for that one area. <laughs> Damn it. I definitely am not gonna be finding this missing piece, but that's how it broke. Peak mode is on, fix hanger, slightly bent new carabiner with the anti cross loading technology a fresh knot because that one is fused and I want it to be slow enough and I think we're ready to go oh god I had my eyes closed again what happened it's working oh that was how was that one lower I had a fresh knot I definitely did not miss the peak force interesting range if you're curious how I do the all-natural drop tower let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video about this. Now, what a lot of people are curious about is do drop tests produce similar results as a slow pull? So now let's slow pull a few of them. <laughs> wow, slow pulls are so much easier than drop tests. And I can find the parts. So it broke down at the bottom. The notch have a little damage. 21.77 is technically over MBS. It's lower than the drop tower though. This one broke at the top and the notch looks a bit damaged. Pretty consistent with our last slow pull. That is pretty funny. We got a much higher force on the compromised elongated carabiner in the first drop test, but they're all breaking above MBS, which means those bolts were surprisingly good sort of enough so excited that we were able to do these tests um the first conversation i ever had with ryan these were the tests that were going through my mind as far as i know no one has done similar tests uh if you know about any i'd love to see that data takeaways uh, these tests really not going to change how i interact with bolts first of all super small sample size uh, there are a huge variety of factors that affect corrosion. I will say that you never know what's going on in the hole. So it could look uh, fine on the outside and be just like flaking away inside the hole. You don't know until you remove it. Though in most cases, a little bit of surface corrosion is not going to affect the strength of the bolt in any meaningful way. The button head split shafts though can break during installation and there have been failures that have led to fatalities with those bolts. I've removed some that I've just tapped on the hanger to orient it and the bolt popped out of the wall. So those are scary, always should be replaced. You'll notice that the hanger had very little corrosion on it because it was stainless. It only had corrosion where the bolt was actually touching it. Bolts like these are now being replaced with stainless or titanium where it's appropriate. And of course, we replaced all the bolts that we damaged during this test. If you like climbing on safe hardware, support the people and organizations that are placing and replacing good hardware. And if you'd like to learn more about the bolts and hardware that you trust your life to, check out the Bolting Bible. Thank you guys so much for watching.